2020. So I hope many of you will come and spread the word among your friends. They had 30 vessels, and he said, I couldn't believe they had that many. Um, he is, uh, he's also responsible. Here, so I can give you this back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, helping to uh, facilitate marine research. So, and the Virginia is lucky to have a group of folks that are, are truly an excellent crew. Um, the captain, John Olney, uh, the chief engineer, Keith Mayer, of our time hopefully chatting about the research vessel Virginia, uh, the vessel that you see here, so you know, oceanography. That's the formal definition of that. Um, and that times, I, I would argue that the, the motivations, let's say, were a little different than what you'd have on an oceanographic research vessel. I think Captain Cook was focused on small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition. And it was launched, as I say, here in, in 1882. And this was a purpose-built vessel that was built for the Albatross 1 through 4, if you will. So over the year, 160 stations uh, around the, the world's oceans. And what was interesting about this ship was that it came out of those voyages. And uh, again, you know, even uh, land once you get up where the North Pole is. So not many people knew what those currents were doing in that area. And Nansen not only did uh, help to uh, close a bottle and then bring it up, and then you could study it. And then at a certain depth, they could drop a messenger. You kind of see one here. It's a big chunk of metal. and it released the bottle, or in the case of the reversing thermometer, it has one of the more unique hull designs, um, as opposed to Shackleton's vessel, as you saw, that was crushed in the ice. So when, when you go in and the ice is open, that exciting tale of uh, it, less about science, this ship is called the Glomar Explorer. So this was built by Howard Hughes here, of Hughes Air, a crane mechanism that secretly lowered out of the bottom of the ship here to pick up the sunken K-129 uh, Soviet submarine of this thing, and this is how FLIP works. So the National Science Foundation, you could charter FLIP if you wanted to. And I would argue that people have also come up with modifications of this and even more fanciful versions of this. The Kila Moana is operated by the University of Hawaii, uh, the investigator by uh, Australia, and they come together and, and agree on a common way of scheduling their ships. And the, the body that helps coordinate this, uh, the submersible submarine there, also in the upper right hand corner, all operated by Woods Hole Oceanographic. Um, and there's some fascinating, uh, the website is really interesting. The upper right hand corner here, I put in quotes the Aleutia 2 and all their oceanographic research is conducted through research vessels that private philanthropic, incredible rich history and excellent reputation for uh, marine science, uh, certainly uh, estuarine ecology and 50s as you can see here. And one of the unique things that I see about this was that uh, for those of folks that are used to boats, but one of the unique aspects of a ferry boat for all of us that have been on those and is it was a, a Navy minesweeper uh, for quite a while in the, during the war and then was repurposed. And um, the fish hawk uh, was, again, you can see it towing the net there. Then since probably the mid-50 current fleet here, uh, as we mentioned, we have over 20 small boats and a series of other larger boats. Um, the tide water again, and that's exactly what Vims did. So they went ahead and defined the types of things they wanted to do. Fish trawls, coring, has a drawing associated with it that's passed off to a, a shipbuilder. So right there in, in Ireland. Um, so you, the question is, is how are ships really built? There's a couple of different ways you can do them. You can build them sort of as a whole place, weld them two of the modules together. And what's amazing, you can see on a 900-foot cruise ship, it's built the same way. And it has to match up. You can, uh, th there's always some glory shots that uh, usually administrator. You can bet that uh, you can bet that uh, all the people that are standing in front of that ship. But and then the next phase, of course, is the outfitting. Uh, so once these giant behemoths come out, you can see the size of these. Out of these. A couple slides of the actual building of the Virginia, and in keeping in mind. And here's more of that. So we've got half the ship here upside down in a different building. So, <laughs> which just seems kind of crazy together. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. Here, and one of the things that most people come and mention to me is, what's the deal with the bow of that thing? What is going on there? 
Um, and it is a very unique smaller than where the actual bow is out the front. This allows longer to see if you have your own personal boats, a lot of times you have a main engine and sometimes you have a kicker you can adjust the pitch of the prop blades to allow the ship to operate the ship. We have a bow thruster. So a bow thruster is, and this is a 250 foot, it's a flush mounted bow thruster and they call it stability on the vessel. Remember I mentioned how beamy the boat was, how wide it is. Um, and that's an important uh, capability. Remember our talk about the Langley was an old ferry boat that we, and we don't want to have anything external to the hull of the ship or it could break off or damage. So we put the cooling mechanisms up in the air. This is a big giant chunk of copper and what, what we're doing is putting a small, subtle electric We had a brand new large spindle of copper. Run all those off winches. We have those winches as well. And what you see circled here, the thing about that is it can reach all over the whole back deck. The side J frame is used to deploy gear right off the side here on the, the, the hull of the ship. So by mounting these down lower, they're outside of where all the bubbles that come down from that, or dynamic positioning allows the captain a great deal of control over the boat. It allows you basically, it incorporates both the thruster and an autopilot, because an autopilot will go to a particular point.